John Castanelli, thank you so much, Castellani. Thank you so much for being here. We know you came on very short notice. Unfortunately, we had the cancellation of, uh, of Representative IBM, and we thank you so much for, for coming and representing the, uh, uh, the, uh, the business roundtable. And uh, he's representing the business roundtable, which is an association of chief executive officers leading the U.S. Corp corporations and the combined workforce of more than 10 million employees and 4.5 trillion in annual revenues. The Business Roundtable has been cited by the Financial Times as the most influential chief, chief executive lobbying group in the United States and is in the forefront of public policy debates advocating for vigorous, dynamic global economy. Prior to becoming president of the Business Roundtable, Castellani was, was executive vice president of Tenneco company and, and part of the senior management team that led the transformation of an ailing conglomerate into seven strong companies. So we expect miracles from you this today. And thank you for the involvement of the Business Roundtable. We had a, a, a very good session yesterday on community colleges over on the, uh, on the, on the Senate side. And again, thank you for that participation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member McKeon, the rest uh, members of the committee, and particularly Mr. Miller and Mr. McKeon, thank you for participating with us yesterday in another very important part of the education uh, issue, the role of community colleges. Across every sector, our CEOs are united in their concern about the continuing reality that far too many students are not graduating from high school with the knowledge and skills that they need to succeed either in higher education or at the workplace. Now, the No Child Left Behind Act is beginning to make a difference, but troubling achievement gaps remain between groups of students in the United States and between U.S. students and their international counterparts, particularly in math and science education. We believe that expanding the talent pool of Americans with a firm grounding in math and science is a critical element of the innovation agenda that the United States must pursue in order to remain competitive in the 21st century. And that's why the Business Roundtable, through its Tapping America's Potential Coalition of 16 national business organizations, established the goal of increasing the number of Americans graduating with an undergraduate degree in science technology, engineering, or math to 400,000 per year by 2015. The current figure is 225,000. Business Roundtable CEOs believe that graduating more students in these key majors is a necessary step towards ensuring continued U.S. technological and economic leadership. But just as important, grounding in these subjects is increasingly necessary for individual success in the modern economy. The Bureau of Labor Statistics <coughs> projects that science and engineering employment in the United States will increase 70 percent faster than the rate for all occupations during the next decade. <clears throat> America will create more and more high-wage jobs for technical professions. The question we face is whether or not our children will be qualified to fill them. It's clear that the United States cannot achieve the TAP goal of 400,000 math, science, and engineering graduates annually without first raising U.S. student achievement in mathematics. Math is the gateway that frequently is the reason why students are unprepared to pursue careers in these fields. By the time a student is in the eighth grade, if he or she is not on a path to su succeed in algebra, high-wage job opportunities diminish. There's a widespread understanding about the importance of learning to read as a foundation for further learning. There is an equally compelling case for the importance of a strong foundation in mathematics. Many companies have programs that introduce elementary and middle school students to exciting careers in science and engineering and give them hands-on experience with interesting science experiments. However, the companies recognize that it's not enough to get students excited about the future in these fields. They also need a foundation of math skills that can turn that excitement into a real possibility. And what I'd like to do is just talk about two of many examples. Texas Instruments has partnered with, CBS, uh, with the CBS television show Numbers, which features a mathematician working with his FBI agent brother to solve crime. TI also has developed a math scholars program at the University of North Texas Dallas campus that ensures full scholarships with a book stipend to students pursuing their Bachelor of Arts degrees in mathematics with a secondary certification. The students teach in Dallas for a minimum of two years in return for this scholarship opportunity. Another example is ExxonMobil, 
who has partnered with the professional golfer Phil Mickelson and his wife Amy to launch the Mickelson ExxonMobil Teachers Academy and provide third through fifth grade teachers with the knowledge and skills necessary to motivate students to pursue careers in science and math. In addition, ExxonMobil Corporation has committed $125 million to the National Math and Science Initiative, which is working with states and universities to scale up two proven programs. First, the training and incentive programs to increase the number of students taking and passing advanced placement math and science courses. And second, one called UTeach, which is a program that encourages math and science majors to enter the teaching profession by offering an integrated degree plan, financial assistance, and an opportunity for early teaching experience for undergraduates. These and other corporate initiatives are making an important contributions, but the policies also need to change. As the advisory panel recommendations point out, a critical bottleneck in U.S. math education is the inadequate supply of well-qualified and highly prepared math teachers. That's why our member chief executive officers were so enthusiastic that the math and science education legislation enacted last year as part of America Competes Act uh, was included, but time and time again we learned that the well-intentioned math education initiatives fail because, because of inadequate attention to high quality teacher preparation and professional development. Mr. Chairman, this committee focuses on education and workforce issues, and those issues will determine whether or not our students and our workers can compete and succeed in our rapidly changing world economy. The education and workforce policies and programs of the last century are not designed to meet the challenges that we are facing today. We stand ready to work with the committee on new approaches for the 21st century, and I thank you for your leadership and the opportunity to testify today and be happy to answer questions.